Looks like uh, SIS is getting a new investor. Hyatt is offering a status match, but don't be too excited. You have to have a certain company affiliation. And last but not least, I have for you not one, I have for you two deal zone alerts. One is business class Lufthansa, the other one is premium economy Scandinavian. My name is Lars. I'm here to bring you more miles, more points and more status. And do not forget to subscribe to our channel that you don't miss your daily dose of more miles, more points and more status. Yeah, I'm looking forward that you hit the notification button, the bell, that you get notifications when we are online or when we have a new episode available for you. Until now, I made it daily. So looking forward and comments are highly welcome and a like would be appreciated as well. Thank you for doing so and helping us growing the channel. The first topic is Scandinavian Airlines. Scandinavian Airlines was always an airline which had troubles because of the three governments which were involved, Norway, Sweden and Denmark. But as you know, Norway is not anymore involved since 2018. I have the feeling that Norway is kind of happy that they are not because otherwise they would have to put money in the whole show. 21.8% is the share of each government, not Norway anymore, but Denmark and Sweden. There's an investor who is interested in investing money. Why? Because um, the CEO, Anko van der Werf, said that SIS is fighting for their life when he took the job over. And uh, he is trying to get 20 billion Swedish crowns refinanced and um, wants to have it as uh, capital so that the company can survive. Um, what should we say? Uh, he says that the um, structure for costs are too high. It's, of course, uh, you know it yourself when you are based in Scandinavia, how the costs are exploding. And um, the company who is interested, uh, they have already someone in place from a consulting who is talking to Scandinavian Airlines about a takeover for a certain amount of shares. Um, the governments of Sweden and Denmark, I think they are happy to get rid of the 21.8%. I don't know if they are reducing it or if they are trying to um, get rid of the whole share they, shares they have. Another thing is, which is, uh, in my opinion, worth mentioning is that uh, Scandinavian Airlines is trying to get 9.5 billion Swedish crowns, which is approximately 900 something million euros um, as a kind of a cushion that they can do the investments they are anticipating. And um, the newspaper Dagens Industry, um, they didn't tell us uh, who the company which is uh, who the company is that is interested in it. I don't know if you know who is interested. Let us know. One thing for sure, Lufthansa is not the one. Lufthansa themselves they are more involved now in Italy. I know that Lufthansa considers the Swedish market market important or the Scandinavian market, but they never said how important it is. In Italy, we know or for Italian market, we know that it's the second uh, important market after the United States for Lufthansa Group. So that just as a side note. <sighs> just tell me, what do you think, even when you have been in the group of Scandinavian Airlines insiders or oil bonus insiders on Facebook, there was someone who was scared about his euro bonus share. Somebody did already post, hey, <laughs> the program can be closed anytime without any compensation. So yeah, that is the problem. Northwest uh, Airlines customers know that by heart. But I'm looking for your comments. What do you think? Do you think that SIS has a future or is it an airline which is just doomed and um, will go further uh, than later? So we will see you earlier than later. Yeah. Airports. The airport in Dublin is one of the few airports who is publicly saying that they effed it up and that they have a problem. Yes, uh, the problem is we have to put our hands up and say we got that wrong. We wish we had more stuff available. DAA apologizes for Dublin airport delays. That is something which is honorable and uh, honest. But on the other side, it shows that the airports are really struggling to get stuff. Airports like Amsterdam, Schiphol 
are implementing new rules. One rule is that you are only allowed to enter the airport four hours before your departure. Then in Dublin, they say the same that they have in, in peak times slots where you can go in. Only exception would be if you are not in this time slot, if you are in special need or if you have mobility services where you cannot stand outside. And on Sunday, over a thousand passengers missed their flight alone in Dublin airport. You remember yesterday I talked about Stockholm and uh, one friend said yesterday um, as well, he went uh, yesterday evening, I think, uh, from Stockholm to Oslo and it was for him just a breeze. So that can happen as well, that there's no trouble at the security. Is this something where you say that is good that you are communicating openly what the troubles is? Or do you say, hey, I don't care, I pay. Um, we, are in, we are entitled for a kind of a service. Um, comment it in the comment section and I'm happy to, yeah, to exchange with your opinions. My personal opinion is that the people who are frontline in security and the check-in, they are the weakest link in all the show because they cannot employ people, they cannot change shifts and they are most likely working already over hours to get us flying. So that is my opinion. Looking forward to yours. Virgin Atlantic. Virgin Atlantic is well known because Richard Branson, who uh, owns the company, is a very glamorous person when it comes to his uh, lifestyle. And uh, now they made a change to the crew. The crew is now allowed to show tattoos. Yes, normally in airlines, Emirates or other airlines, you are not allowed to show tattoos, especially when you have tattoos, you have to uh, cover them with something. And um, I don't know why it is, but mostly people anticipate with tattoos that the people are not as um, dependable or trustworthy um, as they should be. And especially when it comes to aviation, cabin crew should be trustworthy. And um, yeah, that is something which is for a lot of people not the case. For me, myself, I'm not having tattoos. I'm not into tattoos, but if somebody has tattoos, it is his or her private opinion and decision. So I, it's their thing. Um, for me, I don't care because that is just the outer appearance. For a lot of people, it's just that they hide from something. I don't know, or they like it. You can write down what your uh, take is on that. If you have a tattoo and why you made a tattoo, that would be interesting for me to know. But my hairdresser or hair cutter, I don't know how you say that, hair cutter, I think, um, he's fully tattooed, he's even tattoos in the face. So you see that I have no problems and trust issues with people who are doing it because he's sometimes shaving me as well. So with a knife here in the throat would be a problem. But looking forward to your comments down there. Thank you. Another thing or another topic we have to mention in Norway, they just opened the world biggest digital tower center. Yes. Digital tower, how does it work? How do I imagine what it is? A digital tower means that you have not people or, uh, sorry, not um, artificial intelligence that is doing it because it's digital. No, it is people and people are sitting literally kilometers away from the airport or from the place what they are regulating the airspace. And on uh, Wednesday, June the 1st, Avinor, Kungsberg Group and State Secretary Jakob uh, Bieland. I'm so sorry, it's not my native language, Norway, Norwegian, but you will know it how it's called. And um, they have uh, opened up it and, and significant interest, international interest is there, of course. Why? Because they can handle from that spot more airports than just from one spot. We have always, when we see the tower or when you have a pilot's license like I do, then you have always the, the visual impression that the people are sitting over there in the tower, but when you're flying over land, you're talking with radar or with um, ATC in general, and you have then people who are miles away. So for that reason, for me, it's not a big change, it's just mentally. But what you have to know is that there are still people who are deciding and the people are doing it only from the distance and doing the same. Interestingly, what they use, it is military technology. Yes, night vision, 
So they are securing the airspace like they do it before. And some people say even that they do it better because they have, due to the cameras, high resolution and night vision, a much better view and much better impression of the area than they would have when they would be there where the airport is. Um, what should we say? The first airport which had the remote tower was the Rost or Rost airport. Here you have to help me guys again from Norway. Uh, this was tried since 2019. Then they want to ensure that the service they deliver is even now better than before and that the service is approved by the Norwegian civil aviation authorities. König Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace. I don't know why I say Königsberg. Maybe Kongs, Königs, uh, Eck is a nice car. But Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace is the main supplier of the technology. Like I said, it is military technology with the night vision. It makes it possible to spot objects moving through the airspace and around the airport. That is what they promise. Digital remote powers are, of course, not autonomous. So I, it's not like I said uh, before, mentioned before, that it's artificial intelligence. There are people sitting. It's human interaction, very important. Um, and the technology should allow Avinor, which is the, um, the um, airport company in Norway, um, a more streamlined service by developing a core of expertise at new center located um, in Bodo, approximately 50 employees will still work there and do the job. And then the ATM Tower Technology and Communication Solutions was supplied by Indra Navia for the nerds who are watching. Other nerds are Hotel and Status Aviando, Af Aficiandos. Aviandos is, auch, is cool <laughs> for aviation. Aviandos Aficiandos. Hyatt. Hyatt has now a trial offer where you can get the status when you're working for a company, mainly that are companies like Siemens, General Electric, uh, KPMG, you name it. I don't know if your company is working, but there's a website where you can get a status match. And it's even much better because you get directly the status and can requalify within 90 days until 29th of February 2024. 20% bonus you get when you get the Explorer status, but what to do for the bonus to get is you have to sleep within 90 days, 10 nights instead of 30 nights. If you do in this 90 days time period, 20 nights instead of 60 nights, which are normally needed for the Globalist, you get the Globalist status. Yes, also valid until the 29th of February, 2024. What should I say as well? Um, if you're already... Um, Current globalist um, for current uh, glo globalist quick qualify for current explorers upon first check out after registration. World of Hive members with explorer status will have the opportunity to earn globalist status through February 2024. Yes, you can do that. And um, the important thing is to keep in mind that not every company is uh, enrolled in this promotion, and that is why they call it company email. So you can try it. Sometimes it's hit or miss. Deal zone. Deal zone is a part which a lot of people like, and I got the most feedback via WhatsApp. The WhatsApp contact details are in the show notes. It is the Scandinavian Airlines premium economy flight from New York to Dublin. Price is approximately 550 euros, a little bit less. And the fare is uh, in an A class. You have no advanced reservation or ticketing restrictions. Minimum stay is until the first Sunday after departure. Um, ticket is, of course, not refundable. If you want to get the ticket reissued, revalidated, it's 300 US dollars. Routings are, for example, from Newark to Oslo to Copenhagen or to Dublin via Stockholm. That are the possibilities. And what people are mostly interested in, how many points do you get? If you are flying with Scandinavian Airlines and you are a Scandinavian Airlines Eurobonus member, you get um, for this trip um, 11,000 miles plus the bonus you get with your tier. If you're collecting the miles with Lufthansa miles and more, you get 9,340. If you are flying with uh, and collecting with Air China, not flying with Air China, of course, collecting, flying you, you do with SIS, it's 19,830. That is 
what uh, where to credit told me. Another deal would be a business class deal from Amsterdam via Frankfurt or via Zurich to Dubai in business class. This ticket is uh, available for 1,100 something euros, a little bit under 1,200. Any restrictions? No, only that it's a P class. The P class um, is kind of interesting because it gives you only 100% bonus miles on Lufthansa miles and more. When you go to where to credit and you type everything in, miles and more, you get 7,518 points plus the 25% executive bonus when you are an FTL senator or in Hans Circle. With Scandinavian Airlines, you get 7,518 as well. The most you get with Air China, 11,286. Where to credit is the source. Yeah, time wise, a longer show today than the two shows before or three. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for signing up. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for supporting us and looking forward to see you at one of our regular tables. So see you tomorrow for your frequent traveler TV and your daily dose of more miles, more points and more status. So switching off. <laughs>